Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the keywords var, let, and const. Now, what we're going to do is walk through and compare them point by point across a few different levels because at their basic level of functioning, they're all pretty similar. They all help us define variables. However, there are a few differences between these that are important to know. So we're going to start off looking at global scope. Now remember when we work with var variables we saw in the scope videos that we could access a window object and window.var name would give us that variable because it's stored in global scope unless we scope it otherwise. So variables or var are always going to be scoped in global scope unless we do otherwise. However, let and const are not going to be stored in global scope. Now before we look at this, what this really looks like in practice, I want to say that that does not mean that let and const cannot be accessed by other pages. For example, in the old way of enqueuing JavaScript, you have an HTML page and two or three files like a helper's JavaScript library and then your app JavaScript library, maybe some other stuff. And as long as app comes or as long as helpers comes before app, then you could access anything from helpers in it. Now in that scenario, let and const are still accessible by other files. However, they are not bound to the window object. So let's look at what that looks like. So here we're creating a variable, a let, and a const, and we're assigning them different IDs, um, you know, user ID, a post ID, a site ID, kind of mimicking WordPress here. Now, if we go to log out window.userID for the variable, that works, and that is, although a kind of weird behavior, expected in JavaScript. However, notice that window.postID and siteID are not defined because they're not being stored at that global variable. Now, again, this does not mean that they're not accessible to other files. However, they aren't stored in the global var I'm sorry, they aren't stored in the global scope. So that is something or they are stored in a global scope, we could say, but they're not stored on the window object or on the global window object. So a little bit of difference there, but that is helpful to know how these are different. So you'll often hear in JavaScript an argument that you don't want a lot of stuff clouding up or junking up the global namespace or variables being saved into the global scope and attached to the window object and made available more easily to others and just taking up more space, etc. So there are some arguments why we wouldn't want things stored in the window object and let and const are not going to do this even if they are, we could say, in a global scope. So next up, we could look at function scope and all of these work the same across the board. So there's not too much to explain here. If you remember back to working with scopes and functions, if you create a new variable inside of a function, it creates a new scope that is not accessible outside of that function. So in this case, var, let, and const setting up the same thing wrapped inside of a function. If we tried to call any of these outside of the function, then we would not have access to them. So that works completely as expected, nothing weird there. Next up, we have block level scope. And again, you should remember back to the scope videos. If we do curly braces now in JavaScript, we can't have block level scope, but we have to use let or const. If we use var inside of blocks using curly braces, it's still not going to be scoped and accessible outside of it. So let's take a look at that. Here we could see we're doing a simple curly brace block, but this could be a for loop or something like that as well. And we have a var let and const set up and we log them all inside of the block. They all work as expected. However, outside of that block, notice that the var is still accessible. However, the others aren't because they're wrapped inside of that scope and we can't access them outside of it. So this could be really helpful if you do want to block scope things. However, if you don't, then you'll have to use var in this case. So finally, we come to the last major comparison, and that is, can the value be reassigned? And with vars and lets, the answer is yes. And with cons, the answer is no, but sort of no with an asterisk. So const has what's called a mutable binding, but it does not have a mutability. So to explain the difference between these two, immutability means that once the value is set, you can't change it. So if you set site ID equal to one, nobody could change that value again. Now in const, there's a mutable binding, which means that if I set a value equal to a number one, I can't change it again. But if I set a const equal to an object, like a post object, I could go in and change properties within it. Like I could change the post ID or the post title, but I couldn't reassign it to be something else or a new object.
So that's the immutable binding. And the same thing is with arrays. Once you create an array, you could add and remove items from it, but you can't change it to another array or to an object or something like that. So in practice, let's take a look. We have a const that is a post empty object. We have a const that is a bunch of IDs inside of an array. And then we have a const that's equal to just the number one. And in this instance, we could compare one to being a string. So numbers and strings are gonna behave similarly here. So in the first example, if we tried to reassign post from an object to be a string, we would get an error. And that error would be, this cannot be redefined or reassigned. However, if we tried to reassign post title, in this case, we're adding a new property in and we're assigning it. Also, if we were to try to reassign post title once it is assigned, that is allowed. So this again is the difference between immutability and immutable binding. So post equals hello world as a new string would be trying to change the binding itself, which is not okay. Um, however, post title is not changing it from being an object. It's just changing values within the object, which is allowed. And now this is a point where if you don't want this, you'll have to take things um, a little bit further and we'll look at examples and ways of doing that later. However, if your expectation is if you create an object and you don't want that value to be changed, using const alone is not going to be enough. Now we could see with IDs, this is an array and we're adding a new item to the end of it. And this is allowed. We could also pop, pop items off. We could do different things, but we couldn't say IDs equal to, and then establish a new array like that. We couldn't overwrite the binding. So for example, we'll see here, IDs is equal to a new array. This would give us an error because we're not adding and removing values from the existing array. We're trying to rewrite it to another one and const will prevent this and throw an error. And finally, with ID equal to one, plus plus is the same as ID is equal to ID plus one. So really we're just changing the value of it. I could have said ID equal to two or three or turn it into a string, et cetera. All of those would fail. So at the very basic level, if you want const to be used for an I or for a number or a string, it will probably get you the expected behavior, which is once you set up a string, like if your site URL is set to a constant, um, then that would not be allowed to chain, be changed within your application. So that can be really helpful here. However, remember with objects and arrays, you may not get the exact, ex, ex, um, however, remember with objects and arrays, you might not get exactly what you're looking for. So again, here is the kind of basic comparisons here, global scope, all not the same function scope they are all the same block scope they're not the same and can be reassigned not the same so some differences here which really then raises the question of when do you use which one now i will say that there is a movement to use const by default and let otherwise so this is following a principle of strict coding. So be as strict as possible in setting things up, defining what they're going to be, and then not letting them be changed unless they need to be. So by default, if you make everything a const until you realize, oh, this is a value that I wanna change, then it would become a let. Now this leads to the question of what about var? And in this model here, var is being sort of deprecated and you wouldn't really use it unless you wanted to put something on the window object or you didn't want something to be block scoped because that's the only ways that they're different from let or const and you couldn't use one of those to get the same effect. So it's also important to explain that the reason that this direction is happening is because in a lot of other programming languages, constlet and var behave differently than they do in JavaScript. So because it's a little confusing to these developers, it is being moved into a direction of trying to use languages and terms and constlet are newer to the JavaScript language so that it can be easier and more familiar for people writing in other languages to move into JavaScript and understand what's going on. Now, with that said, Technically, you could still use var all the time unless you need to otherwise. So even in some of my examples here and in teaching and in other code around, you will still use see var used. And there isn't technically anything wrong with that. Now, there are instances where maybe you want block scoping or you want some of that prevention for changing the binding or reassigning a value, then you would use const. And while this is technically true and you may still see it a bit, I do wanna point out that this is not really the direction the JavaScript community is taking. However, I think it's important to keep in mind that they're taking it for ease of use and adaptability, less so because technically var doesn't do the things that you would want to. You can still look back to that chart and see that unless you want something to not be in 
global scope that you want to use block scope or you want to not be able to reassign it, then you could still use var in the same way you have been previously. However, what you're likely to see is most folks defaulting to const, let as a backup, and then var only rarely or really when needed. So that should help you along and help explain a little bit about varlet and const and using them in JavaScript.